Hotel presents one full hour of entertainment direct from the 20th Century Fox Studios in Hollywood, California, with Dick Powell as your master of ceremonies. Sweetheart, there must be happiness ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Powell greeting you from sound stage number six in the 20th Century Fox lot in Westwood Hills, good old California. You've seen the stars at play in the orchid room of Hollywood Hotel. We've shown them gathered at one of their brilliant premieres at the Grom's Chinese Theater. You've wanted to see them at work, to see how movies are made, to watch the actual shooting of a picture, songs being written, dance routines and rehearsal. Well, here we are, and you can't say the orchid room doesn't get around. Tonight is the preview of One in a Million, directed by Sidney Landfield, with lovely Sonia Haney, Olympic skating champion in her screen debut. With Adolph Monju, Arlene Judge, Leo Ray, the Ritz Brothers, Bora Minovich, and a host of others. And in their honor, Daryl Zanuck's efficient and imaginative staff have transformed the entire sound stage into a huge skating ring. We're up here on the stage in the audience, well, it's sort of down there on the ice. Skating around among them are Ken Niles and Dwella Parsons with portable mics, ready to pick up and bring you the voices of as many of your favorites as they can reach in that crowd. Want to hear them, huh? Well, all right, Ken and Luella, take it away. Well, here we are, Luella, right down here with all the glorious men and women. Let's have a I've never seen so many beautiful ladies and such handsome gentlemen. Hello, Daron. I haven't seen you since, well, just last week in Lords of London. Well, I wouldn't miss this, Luella. You couldn't keep me away. There's my pal, Jean Rizzo. How are your five girlfriends, the Quint? They're getting bigger and better every day, Luella. <laughs> and Jimmy Sturt is our live and breathe. Jimmy, will you say a word? Not too loud with my name, Lola. I'm playing hockey from the seventh heaven set. I won't tell Daryl, will you? You won't tell him either, will you, Virginia? No. Hello, Lola. Uh-huh. Hello. Hello, Loretta, darling. I'm so glad to see you. Will you? Did you play hockey too? No, darling. Well, I am playing hockey for my Christmas shopping today. Ah, oh, well, I know that everybody will remember by you. Oh, hello, June, dear. How are you? Say, June, would you mind giving me the date of your marriage to Victor McLaughlin so I can have an exclusive on the air? <laughs> oh, I didn't mean Victor McLaughlin. I meant Victor Arsati. You know me. I always make mistakes. That's Luella. <laughs> oh, Luella, we really don't know yet. <laughs> will McLaughlin be surprised? Well, here's Victor. Is McLaughlin going to be men and is Victor going to be glad? Uh, there's my cute little Dixie Dunbar. Say, Dixie, is it true what they say about all your boyfriends? You can't believe everything you hear about Dixie, Miss Parsons. <laughs> I've only heard nice things, and there's Mike. How are you, Mike Whalen? I'm fine, Luella. When I used to dress this way all the time, they wouldn't let me in a place like this. Now they pay me for it. All right, Mr. Whalen, Whalen. Uh, and there's Edie Adams, Metro Goldwyn Mayor Star. All I can say is don't miss one in a million. Oh, Luella, we've got oh, to hurry backstage. Oh, well, they're, they're I know. Back there, Say hello. Hello, everybody. That's Jane with us. No, we've got to go backstage, Luella. Take it away, Dick Powell. Hello, if you'll excuse me, we'll take it up here and give it to Raymond Page. The time that we've allotted you has sort of passed by, and the makers of Campbell Soups present Raymond Page and his orchestra and a musical salute to 20th Century Fox and its guiding genius, Daryl Zanuck. Play, Raymond. <laughs>
is Ken Niles speaking. Well, stand by, everybody. In a few minutes, Dick is going to take you through the 20th Century Fox Studios. Well, I'd like to take you on a trip where they make those other producers of enjoyment Campbell soups. Backstage scenes are always interesting. And believe me, the bright Campbell kitchens with their grand meats and vegetables and chickens, their white-hatted chefs and their immaculate solid nickel kettles are indeed something to see and remember. And one of the most interesting sights is when they make that superb Campbell's tomato soup, the world's most popular of all soups. You know, in movies, they talk of the picture being in the can when it's finished, speaking of the can that holds the film. So it's the picture in the can that counts, just as it's the soup in the can that counts. And you can serve the soup that's our master presentation, Campbell's tomato soup, on your table in a jiffy any time. It's the greatest piece of color work for hungry appetites I know of. A thrilling four-star moving picture of flavor that your family will want to see and enjoy again and again. So, for a grand showing, why not ask your grocer tomorrow for Campbell's Tomato Soup? Well, now, Dick, how about our visit through the studio? Right, O'Ken. How are you feeling down there on the ice, huh? A little shivery, huh? Want to get back in circulation? How about a trip around the lot? Yes, sir, with Warner Brothers' white-haired boy as our guy. Now, look out there, Ken, but why not? Since making thanks a million for Daryl Zanuck, I feel as much at home here as I do in my own lot. All right, Raymond's changed to a march tempo. Get in step, everybody. We're all on the tour of the 20th Century Fox studio. Do you like it, Jenny? Dick, I had no idea it was like this. Streets, sidewalks, lampposts, traffic rules. Look out, Jenny! Oh! People who break them. Well, that's just a film boy on his way to the Jeeves set. They're shooting today. What's that set over there, Dick? Well, that's no set, Jenny. That's the administration building. Telephone, powerhouse, library, ice plant, and... And look, Dick, a blacksmith shop. Just a one-horse town. <laughs> Come on, you MGM loyalist. Dick, those ships. Yes, those are nice ships. They were used in Lords of London, the battle scene between Nelson and the French fleet. Oh, there's an interesting set, Dick. But that's a street, uh, a New Orleans street for Barbara Stanwyck's picture, Banjo on My Knee. Oh. And right across the way is a French street they built for the Simon Stewart picture, Seventh Heaven. They don't care anything about geography around here, do they? <laughs> Dick, there's stage five where you made thanks a million, remember? Remember? Why, Francis, how could I forget? <laughs> I was born without a silver spoon But in my heart I had a golden tune And I find that I don't mind a thing If folks will let me sing Got a pocket full of sunshine and a heart full of song. And when I see you, all I want to do is pass it along, pass it along. I'm sitting high on a hilltop, tossing all my troubles to the moon, where the breeze seems to say, Don't you worry, things are bound to pick up pretty soon. The skies may be a little cloudy, but the world can't go wrong. While you've got a pocket full of sunshine and a heart full of song. Beneath the sky on the hilltop seems to be the world is all in tune. I forget all the hustle and hurry. House and all my troubles to the moon. <laughs> well, well, well. What's the matter, boys? Uh, a little complaint here, Dick. A little uh, complaint, huh? Well. While you sit on a hilltop yes. tossing troubles to the moon, we just sit down in the cellar and rehearse. No, I see. It's mutiny. It's huh? a cinch. We're going to have a nervous breakdown pretty soon. Because that Niles is nuts and Raymond Page is worse. I don't see why you're complaining. You don't see why we're complaining. If you had to play for Raymond Page, you'd know. Oh, well, at least he pays you weekly. That's a fact. He pays us weekly. Very weekly. Very weekly. Ain't it so? Oh. Well, boy, your salary, of course, is enough to pay your rent and laundry bill. Let's give three cheers for our bosses. We never like them, and we always will. For musicians with positions like you fellows, I'm surprised. Would you rather be a salesman or a clerk? Yeah, so while you sit on your hilltop, we'll go right down to the hot shop on our instruments and really go to work. Now, don't be foolish, fellows. Cheer up. The skies will be sunny. Our salary is just three weeks late today. Well, I wouldn't worry. Cheer up. You might get your money. He may be right. He is. Well, then, come on. Let's play. Oh, it's my seat in the evening. When you had a busy afternoon. 
sitting high, high, high on a hilltop. Tossing all my troubles to the moon. Me bounce a Tossing all my troubles to the moon. Baby, baby. Tossing all my troubles to the moon. Well, we'll talk about that later, boys, but let's get on, huh? Dick. What's that red light over the door? Well, that's one of the sound stages. They're shooting. What picture? Step Lively Jeeves with Arthur Treacher, Alan Dinehart, and George Gibbon. Can we go in? Sure, but you'll all have to be very quiet. All right, now. Shh. Now, look, boys, that's, the one with that's Gene Ford, the director. Jeeves, you're seated on the park bench. Boss, you and Cedric are two confidence men who are using Jeeves in one of your schemes. You both walk up to him and stare intently into his eyes. Uh, Jeeves, you register complete bewilderment. I shall be most horribly bewildered, I assure you. <laughs> all right. Ready. Why? Action. Speed. All right. Dialogue. The eyes. Look at that eyes and that ears. That schnoz. Ah, there could be no other schnoz like that. Impossible, and yet you may be right. I, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Uh, we beg your pardon, but your name is Jeeves, isn't it? It is Rupert Bedgwick Jeeves. I told you, Chedrick, he is our man. What amazing luck. What a piece of incredible good fortune. Your hand, sir, let me congratulate you. But, gentlemen, really, I we've mean... We've been sir. searching for you for months. I haven't time to tell you of the extensive research we've made, but we have absolute proof that you are the direct descendant of Sir Francis Drake. And the heir to millions. Sir Francis Drake, millions? Impossible. You're making a mistake, gentlemen. For three generations, the men of my family have been in service. My grandfather was a gentleman's gentleman to Lord... What Mag three generations? This dates back three centuries. To Queen Elizabeth's time. Gentlemen, I have no idea. But, but you had an aunt, didn't you? Of course I had an aunt. What Everybody had an aunt. What, what was, was her, her name? Who oh, must I, gentlemen? I'm sorry, but you must. Well, her name was Honoria Dibble. Dribble, that's right. And her husband's name was? Well, the Jeeves and the Bedricks were never on close terms with the Dibbles. My aunt Honoria Dibble was never married, as far as I know. That's right. But her mother was... And she had a father. Do you question that? No. No, no, no. And that man's father. Ha, ah, what do you know about him? What does anybody know about him? Even his wife. But his mother. Ha, <laughs> ha. She knew, and she had a grandmother. You doubt that? Look. A family tree, sir. The Drake line. Here we are, 1592. Here's Francis Drake. And now we're in the 17th century. 1662. 1663, right? Right. All right. Here's a branch of the Badgers. You see? Here it trails away, right? Oh, but look here. What's this? A dibble. A dibble, sir? A dribble on the Drake tree. But here the line divides. Drake has circled the globe. He stops in the West Indies. What happens? He has no son. But does he or doesn't he? I'm sure I couldn't say, sir. Look on the tree, the first honoria Badgewick. Badgewick, mind you. And there is a son. And what's this? Henry Gulliver Dibble, 1702. As simple as two and seven or ten. This branch comes straight down here, here, to right here. The last twig, sir. And that twig is you, right? Right. Oh, right. Uh, well, where did all this gang come from? Hello, Dick. Why, hello, Mr. Boyd. <laughs> Just showing a few million guests around. Mr. Tweeter, you were wonderful. If you don't mind, the name is Treacher. <laughs> well, teacher or teacher, you're still wonderful. Well, skip it. Let's dance, shall we? All right. Wances. <laughs> you do the darndest thing, little baby. You're referring to me. But oh, you're so doggone cute with it all. Personally, I'd be frightfully glad to clip your wings, <laughs> baby. I'm flying so high on two for a fall. I always feel presumptuous, but you know you're up to date. The attitude begging for an absolutely slays me. And I'm almost afraid. You're driving me crazy. Well, I, I must be touched in the head. La di da, you, you make the most amazing noises, baby. But definitely oh, no, you're, you're so topping the cute with it all. all. Very nice, you two. Back into the street, everybody. There's still a lot of ground to cover. Don't get lost, Jenny. I won't. What set is that across the way? Well, that's one of the New York streets. The picture I'm doing here on the avenue. A trolley car. Oh, let's go for a ride. Well, you wouldn't go very far. That's the shortest trolley line in the world. Runs under its own power, but only for half a block. Where do we go now, Dick? Let's try this door and, and see what happens. <laughs> it's Jack Haskell rehearsing some of the dance numbers for on the avenue. We'll sneak in, huh? Come on, come on. Step out of it. Lucille, Lucille. Watch that break. Mister. Geneva, Geneva, watch that spin. You're on your toes instead of on your feet. Come on, that's the idea. Gee, tempo. Girl, gee, tempo. As to what are you gawking at? What's all the gawking for? Come on. Hey, well, Oh, come on. 
Oh, well, uh, well, all right, all right. I hate to break this up, but, but what'll it be, huh? Oh, something nice. Well, nice? Like, for instance, what? Oh, like, for instance, oh, you know, something sweet and pretty. Like, uh, believe me, of all those endearing young charms. Yeah, that's it. What would you think? <laughs> well, I've been waiting a year for someone to ask me to sing that. Oh. Even the introduction's pretty, huh? Believe me if all those endearing young charms Which I gaze on so fondly today Were to change by tomorrow and feed in my arms Like the fairy gifts fading But still be adored as this moment thought. Let my loveliness fade as it will. And around the dear ruin, each wish of my. Singing. Maybe you'd like to hear Jenny sing One Fine Day for Madame Butterfly, huh? Oh, we'd love it. Imagine those kids, Jenny, when they get a chance to ask for music. See what they pick? Mm-hmm. Nice sentimental song.
you, thank you, thank you, Jenny. So you like that, huh? And I suppose if Ego Gorin were to sing Cosbach, huh? All right, Raymond, serve it up. Ego Gorin. Sanctum Sanctorum, here and through this first door. And if you'll all behave, we'll give you a glimpse of... Santa Claus? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> to a lot of people, he is Santa Claus. Who, Dick? One of Screenland's most able producers, a great showman, a tireless worker, and one of the best-liked fellows in Hollywood. Daryl Zanuck. Yes, and we wouldn't dare come as far as this if Luella Parsons weren't with us. Come here, Luella, you go first. All right, Dick, here we go. Now, quiet now, and I'll open the door to his workshop. That's Henry King, who directed Lords of London. He's now directing Seventh Heaven over near the piano with Lou Pollock and Sidney Mitchell, songwriters. No, no, boys, I'm sorry, but that one won't do at all. It's a nice tune, but it isn't just what I want. After all, Seventh Heaven, it's a simple story. What it needs is simple music. I want something beautiful, a nice sentiment that everybody can understand and a tune that people are going to remember. Well, we've got another one, Mr. King. Maybe you will like this one better. How does it go? How does it go? <laughs> well, it goes something like this, Mr. King. Seven, heaven is in your eyes. Lou, Lou, you're murdering it. Look, Mr. King, we brought Tony Morton along. If it's all right with you, I'd like him to sing it, so you'll at least know what it sounds like. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Tony. Two hearts in love are far above all earthly mortals. 
They tread the clouds Far from the crowds When you're with me We seem to be At heaven's portals In seventh heaven I want to soar Forevermore Seventh heaven cornered, I don't see how I can get out of it. <laughs> I know how it is, Daryl. After five years, I'm just scared to death myself. It is customary whenever a moving picture company is successful to give the praise and credit on an occasion like this to the producers. But I want you to know that the credit actually belongs to the writers, the directors, the artists, and all of the workers who have contributed in the development of 20th Century Fox. It is their loyal cooperation and sincere collaboration that has made the 20th Century Fox trademark a world symbol for better moving pictures. On behalf of our president, Mr. Sidney R. Kent, and the chairman of our board, Mr. Joseph M. Skink, and, and on behalf of all of the workers of 20th Century Fox Studio, and through the courtesy of Hollywood Hotel, I bid you welcome to Movie Tone City. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, I've known the production chief of this studio for many years. In fact, I made my first picture for him while he was still associated with Warner Brothers. His is one of the most amazing careers in Hollywood. Starting as a writer, he branched out to direction and production and was never satisfied until he had this studio of his own to carry out his ideas, original ideas. Country Doctor, Thanks a Million, Ramona, Sing Baby Sing, Pigskin Parade, Banjo on My Knee, and Lords of London are only a few of his recent successes. And now let's go back a little way in his career. Remember the Follies Bergere with Maurice Chevalier and Anne Southern? And that little song about uh, the sun shining, there's no pining, your hat's lined with a silver lining. You're happy when you're singing a happy song. The birds singing and bells ringing, and you'll find what a joy they're bringing, because you're happy when you're singing a happy song. When trouble troubles you, sing, sing baby, nice. sing. Do you like what birdies do? Sing, baby, sing. When cold winter comes, and they are all out of problems. Poor little birdies, they ain't eating. But that sweet, 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 and oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, do a song a day. Keep me, oh, Mr. Bloom, away. Hard luck don't like music with that certain swing. So swing while you sing, baby, sing. 